Hey guys, this is Camfree15. I'm back at it with another video for you guys. And after another two week break, we are finally back with some more fairy tale. And man, I laughed so freaking hard this chapter. But at the same time, my I was utterly shocked by the ending of this chapter. Um, anyways, as you guys last remember, our boys, Gray and us, were captured by Celine along with the other cast members. Um, and essentially it seems like the other cast members were essentially like, you know, well, we find out what happens to the other cast of characters, but Natsu and Gray were essentially being like, guys pinned up by chicks just playing around with them and stuff like that. but. Um, this manga chapter honestly was actually pretty interesting um, from the standpoint of the fact that, you know, what essentially we find out that what Yo it was Yoko who kind of transformed them along with Celine that kind of transformed our characters into, you know, these yokai, you know, these different type of beings. They really are freaking powerful because Lucy is legit like. This Lucy, like Serpent Snake Lucy, is essentially like making Natsu go all the way to lightning, you know, lightning flame dragon mode. You know, like, you know, if you're pushing Natsu to that limit, you know, you're a tough opponent for him to fight and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to really do a rundown of the chapter because when I reread this chapter, it's kind of just some things I can actually, honest to goodness, remember and stuff like that. So I'm not really gonna do most of anything. Um, I will say the comedy in this chapter was hilarious from the fact that this Lucy, this alliteration of Lucy, it seems like she's got a control of herself, but at the same time, she's obviously under the control of Celine. Um, you know, I listened to somebody else review this chapter and they brought up a point by saying like, it's kind of like how Toka did when she was doing her whole white wizard thing and stuff like that when she had the influence or the control of fairy tale as opposed to our main men member so it could be something going on like this where maybe she got that power from Celine, and that's how she was able to do all this stuff um and it seems like along with changing you know their their appearance she's had the same overbearing type of you know control over them because it seems like their personalities are in check. It's just their personalities are serving their own, they're serving Celine's own evil deeds and stuff like that. And you can see like Lucy, she's being very, and I mean, again, can I just say they are very much hinting at the Nalu shipping, you know, here in this chapter, they've been hinting at Nalu out of the ass in the entire 100 year quest, like manga of its run. Um, but again, here's another moment in this chapter where they're hinting at this Nalu, you know, situation and stuff like this. When you have like this half naked, you know, Lucy who's really naked from the top up because she has no bottom legs or anything because she's a snake, you know, she's like saying all these, she's, she's, she's essentially flirting with Natsu. And to see Natsu actually, you know, get flustered by this, which honestly I found hilarious. <laughs> You know, I'm like, wow, you think it's the other way around, you know? Well, usually it's the other way around where now it's just kind of the one who's kind of sometimes being flirtatious or sometimes being inappropriate um, to Lucy. And Lucy's the one that gets flirtatious and kind of kicks him around and stuff like that. But here was the complete opposite of that, which if this again could show maybe, even though this is not really Lucy, but it is Lucy, maybe it shows that this is Lucy's kind of true desires and feelings for Natsu, but yeah, um, it was funny for the time being and stuff like that. So that is interesting. Uh, and, and I love their reactions when they, when they cut back to Celine's group because all the other girls are laughing. All of her and the other girls are having their reactions and stuff like that. So yeah, um, now Celine, you know, her thing is like, huh, I wonder what you're going to do to your friend. Are you going to kill her? But obviously, um, the thing is, you know, Natsu's probably going to do an attack or Aquarius probably is going to do an attack where, guess what? You know, it's going to probably 
knock Lucy out of this little thing and eventually she'll reawaken and come back to being her own self and stuff like that. But it's interesting too, because we know Natsu does really care about Lucy so much that he's not willing to do anything. Like the dude, like the first movie does is like just fire dragon iron fist. Like that's the very first attack we've seen him use from the very start of the series. You know, that's one of, you know, it's still a powerful attack with the power he's at now, but it's still one of more of his, his attacks where it's like, eh, I'm not going really all out. I'm just here to just make you stall for time and make sure I don't hurt you too much and stuff like that. So that was freaking interesting. Um, Celine also says she wants, you know, them to distort for her. So that is interesting and stuff like that. Um, again, <laughs> when I go through the, I'm just, cause I'm scrolling through just the chapter. Again, I was dying at the part when she's got him wrapped up and she's like, I'm gonna eat you up. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I don't want that. Um, again, <laughs> they, I'm sorry, this, this scene, the Natsu Lucy battle gave so many sexual endowendos between the two where I'm like, bruh, what is going on here? So that was funny. Now, they finally cut over to Grey, and the person Grey's actually going up against is Wendy and stuff like that. So, um, the thing is, <laughs> Wendy's kind of being flirtatious too with Grey and stuff like that. Um, in this whole talk too, we also find out here that Grey, um, we know his thing is stripping. Like, it's been a thing since the main start of the series and stuff like that. And he's even, you know, what I like about Gray is like, yes, he just sometimes strips without even knowing that he strips. But he's saying here in his own monologue, he's like, bro, these girls were all over me and stuff like that. Um, and I don't like the fact that they took off my clothes. You know, it doesn't feel right if I'm not the one doing it, which is very freaking funny and stuff like that. He does make a mention about Juvia. So that could be a potential hint um of fact maybe juvia might come into this arc again who knows we're just gonna find out um unless you know he was thinking i hope juvia kind of does the things that those girls were doing even though technically she's gone to that extent where she's done things like that they could all again like i said they could be hinting at juvia making a return in this arc in the ellen tier arc um because the cover page actually did have gray and juvia in it so could be Mashima hinting at something. But again, Wendy shows up and stuff like that. And she's like wearing some sort of cat costume, um, which was freaking funny and stuff like that. Um, again, at the same time, it feels like she's being very flirtatious with Gray in this moment. Um, that's just me. Um, so yeah. Um, now, the funny thing is Gray's like, I know I have to fight you, but you're just too damn cute to freaking hurt you and stuff like that. Then we see Happy and Carla after she calls Happy and Carla. And the funny thing is I asked too, it's like, bro, if they did what they did to Lucy, what happened to Happy and Carla? Well, guess what? They're essentially fucking tigers. They are essentially big old tigers. And I'm like, good Lord, what? Um, Yeah, they, they remind me of, if you watch ReZero, um, Puck when he transforms to the big giant cat. Um, that's what it reminded me of. And I'm like, wow, okay. Well, that's very interesting and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that whole thing is freaking crazy and stuff like that. Um, it cuts back to the Lucy Natsu fight. Um, another, th another thing that I did find funny about this, again, the sexual innuendos here. There's a part where Natsu just essentially curl up in her tits. And essentially she's like, Lucy's like, could you please not talk so loud into my chest? And then <laughs> freaking, um, we, we see Natsu, be like, she's, and she she's like covering up, she's getting so embarrassed. And Natsu's like, man, put something on, damn it. And again, it shows you that Natsu's getting very flustered by this whole Lucy thing. Now, um, two, we also see this um, snake Lucy use Aquametria um, and stuff like that. So it seems like this Lucy has all her basic attacks. She can do some of the things she can, and they bring on later of the fact that you know it's her spiritual, it's her spiritual magic, essentially doing all this and stuff like that. And you know it's going to show. We heard the last few chapters how Lucy 
you know, kind of blames herself for not being as strong as she wants to be. Um, but, you know, this could be a thing where maybe she, this is her power boost after she turns back to normal. You know, maybe she gets her power boost this way where she's just much more stronger. And listen, you know, even though Lucy is a character that isn't the strongest out of the cast of crew, the more upper tier fairy tale characters, mostly the guys, um, with the exception of Urz and a few other girls, um, she is still pretty formidable and pretty strong. Like, you know, they really did power up, you know, after um, the Tartaros arc. Like, when they had the Alvarez Empire arc essentially start of the Avatar arc start, you know, you could see her magic much more developed and stuff like that. And, you know, you do remember that one part, even though I think she was just joking around. She was like, oh, you, you know, when, you know, her and Nasu finally reunited after the year time skip before um, Alvar the Alvarez arc. Um, she was telling, she did tell Nazi like, well, if you want to prove, you know, how much strong, how strong you are, I can show you how much stronger I am compared to a year ago. And she was actually like open to having a fight when a year before that time, she probably would have never done that. But she was pretty confident in her abilities to even say like, I can't beat Natsu, but at least I can probably hold my own against him. Um, so yeah, and again, this is another thing because even Natsu later in the, in this chapter even hands like we haven't fought a lot Lucy and stuff like that um another thing is you know Lucy can like essentially summon water too before she did her aquametria attack um makes sense because she's kind of like a sea snake essentially and stuff like that so yeah again Natsu makes another hint like her powers are almost like juvie and stuff like that so yeah um and, and you know, it, this whole fight is kind of a psychological fight because, again, like I said earlier in this review, Natsu doesn't want to hurt Lucy. Like, Lucy kind of does a whole fake facade by saying, it's me, Natsu, don't freaking hurt me. And he kind of, you know, freaking kind of stops a bit because he's like, I'm not trying to hurt her and stuff like that. And then she fell for it. But, you know, the chapter ended pretty freaking crazy and stuff like that. Um, and again, after going to Lightning Flame Dragon mode, um, essentially, um, we see something like a spiral of the freaking water around and we see Aquarius pop back up again. Um, now Aquarius, um, I don't know what she's gonna do, but maybe may knock some sense into Lucy to where she eventually snaps back into reality and stuff like that. But it was a nice way to end this freaking chapter and i'm again looking forward to it mashima is doing a great job in these two week chapters like honestly you know compared to what we were getting in the what what we were getting in the all around arc was really good um but i'm really liking what we're getting in the ellen tier celine arc whatever you want to call it um i'm probably going to call it the ellen the ellen tier arc um you know i'm like i'm definitely liking where you know this is going because you know they're just giving us shock after shock after shock now the one character we did not see compared to lucy wendy carla and happy is urza and i've seen some people throwing around the world word that maybe this is when we're probably going to get our natsu versus urza matchup i could definitely see that coming um i definitely can um maybe aquarius is like you go on i'll take care of lucy um and bring her back to her senses and you know that's when you have Natsu run into Urza and you get the faded you know matchup between Natsu and Urza that they have teased in the past in the main series of Fairy Tale. they just never fully went through with it um so this is going to be the first time we probably get it um or the first time we actually get a legit fight between Urza and Natsu um personally I thought you know it was gonna what they would do is you know they would have Natsu and Grey versus Urza because Natsu and Grey are both scared of Urza, um, and they both fear her. Um, but again, like I said, they could go that direction, but I think they're gonna have Grave go against Wendy, Carla, and Happy, eventually shut that stuff down for them. So um yeah, but other than that, it was a really good chapter. Again, another hit of fairy tale. And I'm really enjoying this freaking series the more I watch more of it. I mean, not watch more of it, more I read of it. Oh well. I know without a shadow of doubt after a while, maybe after, you know, maybe next year, maybe in 2023, I don't know when, um, maybe they'll announce um, a fairy tale 100 year quest anime. The reason why I don't say they're going to announce one, maybe they'll announce one maybe at the end of the year, like they did with Eden Zero. Um, the reason why I don't 
think they're going to do that is because, like I said, Eden Zero is actually coming out um, actually sooner. It's coming out this spring um, in April. Um, and I feel like they'll probably announce maybe one of your 100 year quest anime, probably maybe late November, early December. Um, but if they're going to come out with a 100 year quest anime, it's going to probably be maybe next year or maybe in 2023. Um, but other than that, that's kind of it. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. So if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's manga chapter review for Fairy Tale. Your impressions on the strength of Luffy. I mean, not Luffy. Lucy in this chapter. Um, how is Grey going to defeat Wendy and the, uh, the, our lovely little X seeds? Well, little. Um, and who do you think who's going to go up against Urza? Is it going to be Grey and Natsu or is it going to be just Natsu? Um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be very interesting because it also, and again, we still haven't got anything going on with to the Toka situation and Ferris situation going on um, because, you know, they're off to go get their priest person. And maybe the priest person can transform or change the people back to what they were. So, again, again, like I said, good chapter. And yeah, so uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button if you want to get more fairy tale content. Um, I'm going to continue to do these fairy tale 100 year quest reviews. Um, I, I recently did um, a Sun Arc Village review of Fairy Tale, I think last week ago. Um, I don't know when I'm going to have my first uh, Tartaros Arc review, which is part one of that, um, up because I have to get my notes for that and I'm busy doing other stuff like school and then other stuff on the channel. Um, but I will get the Tartaros Arc video out. Funny enough, thank goodness I actually recently beat the Fairy Tale game, so. Um, I'm kind of now refreshed with some things from the Tartarus arc. Um, other than that, that's kind of it. So I'm gonna get out of here. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day or night. I want you to check out this video. Until then guys, hopefully you guys are staying safe. Until then guys, peace.